So since this is kind of the holding pattern that we're in right now, where it's mm -hmm. kind of moody and every day feels like there's at least the potential of some storms and thunderstorms and whatnot, yeah. uh, let's talk a little bit about those tornadoes that we know have been confirmed that we there were two uh, mm -hmm. that touched down in the Spokane area on Friday night. They were the first in about six years. One was in Airway Heights. The other was uh, could be seen from a Vista Stadium over in Spokane Valley. So we want to talk a little bit more about just what we know about what we actually saw this weekend, how strong they were. We're still waiting for the official rate. Right. Yeah, you know, this is one where back on Friday night, remember we ended the show literally at 7 p.m. and yep. said, hey, here's the storm. It has signs that it's going to drop nickel size hail mm -hmm. and have some very gusty outflow winds. Those are the two things yep. that we said to close the show on Friday. Now, those storms were that one storm we were talking about went on to drop its first tornado in Airway Heights there at 7.03 p.m. and then the second one in Spokane Valley at 7.20 p.m. Now, we don't officially have a rating just yet, but when it comes to the enhanced Fujita scale and your rating, basically what you do is you go assess the damage and you go, it takes this much wind to cause that type of damage. So Whitney, when mm. it comes to what we saw back on Friday, when something hits a mobile home park, when you're in that 86 to 110 mile per hour range, mm -hmm. that is enough to topple a mobile home. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at trees knocked over, that's about that 65 to 85 mile per hour mm -hmm. range. Okay. If the tree itself is uprooted, if the tree itself is snapped off, then you're up in that EF1 range. So what's okay. likely we see out of this is EF zeros. Okay, so I was just curious as I was thinking back, just like you were talking about how we ended the show on Friday, mm. you definitely had your eyes on it. Does any thunderstorm potentially have the ability to kind of turn into these types of conditions or not necessarily? Not necessarily. You need quite a bit to go through it. So we're going to walk through this. Go with me here. Okay. For starters, you need a little bit of wind at the ground. You need a lot of wind up in the atmosphere overhead, so a stronger wind up high. Then what will happen is you get this rotating column of air that forms in the atmosphere because your wind is going faster up high and slower down low. Imagine rolling a pencil between your hands if your top hand is moving faster. Okay. Then what happens is we often talk about convection. Convection is basically an updraft in a thunderstorm. So you're pulling air up from the ground, and what that will wind up doing is rotate that column of air more vertically and then it starts stacking upon itself <laughs> until it's pure vertical. At this point in time, you'll oftentimes get a hook echo showing up on radar and a wall cloud that forms. Mm -hmm. That wall cloud is that lowering wall of a cloud that forms kind of separate from the supercell thunderstorm itself. From there, if you keep the convection and this doesn't kind of bring happiness to the atmosphere, you'll get a tornado or a funnel first. That rotating column of air that comes down is called the condensation funnel. If it doesn't reach the ground, it's a funnel cloud. If it does reach the ground, it is then considered a tornado. And then that's when you go back and assess the damage after because you don't want to be anywhere near it while it's happening. So based on that, it's obviously very specific conditions. Mm -hmm. Also based on that, do you think it's likely that we're going to have more of these, or is this again just kind of a, a fluke occurrence? You know, that Friday storm could have very well been what we call a land spout. Mm -hmm. Similar, but different. Okay. It forms, it's typically weaker. You're typically on the EF1, EF0. You don't need those same atmospheric conditions to get that to happen. And so, even this past weekend, one of our producers called into the National Weather Service and said, Are we done with it? And mm -hmm. they said, Something like that can happen but we're not looking at a tornado outbreak or mm -hmm. a tornado mm -hmm. type weather pattern. Well, that should be a relief to everyone who is a little bit concerned, especially the people out in that area who are still, of course, picking up all the pieces. Yes, absolutely. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much.